first. So what is the importance of a distal femoral cut? As I've previously explained, it is the distal femoral cut that gives you the valgus for the final mechanical axis. It is the distal cut that majorly affects the extension gap. As the knee is in flexion, it is only the posterior cut that affects the flexion. The tibia has effect on both the extension as well as the flexion. But as we give some amount of slope to the tibia, that is the proximal tibia, that affects mainly the flexion. Because when you extend the knee, it is the anterior part of the tibia that comes in contact with the distal femur. As we give some amount of slope and when the knee flexes, the posterior part of the slope comes in contact with the posterior femur. So tibia has major effect on the flexion gap, whereas the distal femoral cut has major effect on the extension gap. The posterior cut has effect on the flexion gap. Now while performing a TK, you try to maintain the natural joint line of this particular knee. So what is the joint line in a normal knee? Joint line is the contact of the distal femur with the distal tibia. So once you replace the knee, the joint line in extension is the contact between the implant of the femur as well as the insert surface of the tibia. I repeat, it is the insert surface of the tibia. So in an extension, in a replaced knee, the distal femoral cut determines the position of the joint line. So when you take more cut on the distal femur, the joint line is raised. The tibia doesn't have to do anything with the joint line because whatever tibia we cut is replaced by the tibial tray as well as the insert. If you cut more on the tibia, you can replace it with a bigger insert. But in the case of a distal femur, you have no other option because I have explained the distal femur size is only 9 mm. So the more you cut, the replacement you do is only that of 9 mm. You can't change it. So let us start with the distal femoral cut. For this, we are using an intramedullary jig to do the cut. So the most important thing is the entry point into the intramedullary canal. For this, what I do is I mark the highest point of the intracondylar notch after removal of my osteophytes. Then I mark, I find the trochlea and I mark the lowest portion of the trochlea. And I connect the lowest point of this particular mark with the, the highest point of the notch. This particular line is in line with the PCL insertion and that too, in particular, the medial border of the PCL insertion. So that is also one point which surgeons use that is the PCL insertion, you mark the medial insertion and come almost around 6 mm above and try to make the entry point. Now what is the importance of this particular entry point? This entry point, if it is lateralized towards this side, your particular intramedullary rod goes in this particular direction and we have already fixed the valgus. So what happens is you will be giving an excessive valgus. Now if you take it more medially, you will be giving an excessive varus. So the entry point is of very importance in the mediolateral plane. Now what happens if you take it more anteriorly? In a TK, we attempt to give the knee its normal flexion. We don't want it to go into extension. Giving a particular knee in extension can finally lead to a hyperextension and it will alter the patellar biomechanics. So we don't want the entry point to go anterior nor posterior, but exactly at the point which I have explained previously. So this is the intramedullary jig that we use for the femur distal cut. So I've already set it in six degree. You can see the mark between five and seven, six degrees. So this particular cutting block is always in 6 degree of valgus in corresponding to this particular rod. So now the knee is placed in around 70 degree of flexion. You have done your markings. So you're gonna make an entry point. So make sure that your entry point 
is on the medial side to this particular line and make sure that it just touches this line when you aim towards the intramedullary canal. So you take your drill, place it over here and direct it towards the GT so that you can make it fix. Make sure that you don't rotate this. If you do so, what happens is that your canal becomes wide and your intramedullary rod can go in any direction. So make sure you don't do this at all times when you do the surgery. Make sure you go in one particular shot and come out. The next important step is you suction whatever intramedullary material is there to prevent fat embolism, especially in cases of elderly females. Now we have assembled the cutting block on the rod. So as we can see, this rod goes into the intramedullary canal and this particular portion rests on the condyles.